Hello everyone. In this lecture, we'll be learning about the we'll be deriving the IV relations of a of a MOSFET, and we'll see how capacitance and the mobility affect the uh, affect the IV relations in case of an NMOS or PMOS. Now we have to measure the current. We know current is equal to Q, that is a charge divided by time. Now we know the charge in the channel. Uh, charge is uh, C O X W L. Vgs minus Vt minus Vts by 2 and the time is L square divided by mu uh, Vds. So we cancel this L and here we have an L. So if we modify it, what do we get? Cox W by L mu mu Cox W by L Vgs minus Vt minus Vds by 2 whole into Vds. So this part here is a constant. We considering this as beta. It depends on MOSFET to MOSFET. So beta is equal to Vgs minus Vt minus Vds by 2 Vds. This is, a, this is the IV characteristics or current voltage relationship. Uh, in linear region here beta is equal to uh, mu c o x w by l so this is a this is the current voltage characteristics in the linear region of it now in the saturation region we know that vds is much higher as a result vgd becomes less than vt if vgd becomes less than vt vds essentially uh, becomes Vgs minus Vt. We, uh, so if we replace in this equation Vgs by uh, Vgs minus Vt, we get beta Vgs minus Vt minus half Vgs minus Vt Vgs minus Vt. So from here we get half Vgs uh, beta by 2 Vgs minus Vt. This Vgs minus Vt uh, uh, gets multiplied to it. So we will get Vgs minus Vt square. So in the saturation region Ids is equal to beta by 2 Vgs minus Vt whole square. So the if we look at the summary of IV characteristics when the region is cut off. Uh, the current flowing through is zero. That is, no current flows through the MOSFET. When the region is linear, as uh, linear means the drain to source voltage is greater than the saturated saturated voltage VDS sat. We get beta is uh, IDS is equal to beta into VGS minus VT minus VDS by two whole into VDS. And when we reach the saturation region, when uh, sorry here we have a wrong expression. Here VDS is less than VD saturation. And when VDS is greater than VD, VD saturation, we get IDS is equal to beta by 2 VGS minus VD whole square. So the IV characteristics assumes three form. First form, we have a zero voltage. And at linear region, our voltage is proportional to the VDS. And in the saturation region, there is no dependence of the, uh, of the current to VDS. As a result, we, we can see, we will be seeing these three regions in, a, in the IV characteristics. If you look at the IV characteristics, at first we have the linear region where the current is dependent on the voltage and after certain time we have the saturation region where there is no dependence of current on actual value of VDS. As the VDS increases, current remains constant here in the saturation region. But in the linear region, as VDS increases, current also increases. So, we are here viewing an example where we will be measuring, uh, we will be measuring 6, uh, 0.6 micrometer process, uh, uh, measuring the IV characteristics of a 0.6 micrometer process. Uh, the parameters given here are oxide thickness with, is uh, 100 angstrom, mu is equal to 350 centimeter square into uh, square per volt second, mu is the mobility and threshold voltage is 0.7. Now, the beta, which is a constant parameter, for this MOSFET, the beta would be 
mu is 350, COX is 3.9 into 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 14 and, <coughs> uh, and T is equal to 100 into 10 to the power minus 8. One thing is to be remembered, 100 angstrom means 100 into 10 to the power minus 8 centimeter. We have to always consider the units that we are taking into account. This is in centimeter, this is in centimeter. If you are calculating in centimeters, everything has to be in centimeter. If you are calculating in meters, everything has to be in meter. So these units are really important. So we get 120 here. The result of this operation is actually 120 into 10 inverse 6. So we write as 120 W by L micrometer uh, per whole square. Micrometer because 10 to the power minus 6, we have considered it as a micrometer. Now, using these parameters, if we increase the VDS, uh, by in the, uh, we can draw the cutoff region, the linear region and the saturation region for different values of VDS and the curve will look something like this. Now, if we continue, consider the PMOS, what happens is the opposite phenomena happens. Here, the curve is similar, we have a linear region and then we have a saturation region but everything is in the negative side because uh, the PMOS is almost inverse to the NMOS in, in, in its operation. One thing to be noted that in case of PMOS, the majority carriers or the actual carriers are the holes and the holes are slower than electrons. Holes are about three, 2 to 3 times slower than electrons. That is mobility of the holes are 2 to 3 times slower than that of holes. As a result, what happens we, when we design a PMOS, if we want the same, uh, if we want the same operation uh, as that of NMOS, we are considering that the holes, the mobility of holes are almost half than the electrons. If we are considering that, we have to assume that the width of the PMOS is twice that of NMOS because I, T, S, if we consider the linear region, we get uh, mu C, O, X, W by L, V, G, S minus V, T minus V, T, S by 2 into V, T, S. This is the current equation for linear, uh, uh, linear expression. Uh, sorry, linear region. Now, in case of uh, in case of uh, PMOS, mu P is equal to half mu M. So here, in case of if we consider PMOS, there is a factor two involved, and in order to nullify that factor, we have to multiply two so that they cancel each other, and we multiply the two with. width. That is, in case of our operation, if we want similar performance from a PMOS as considered to NMOS in terms of current, we have to design the PMOS in such a way that the width of PMOS is, is equal to twice the width of NMOS. Now again capacitance, uh, we have considered, we will be considering capacitance, we have already considered gate capacitance that is created by the inversion layer. Again, another source of capaci capacitance is the source capacitance, uh, diffusion capacitance. For example, let us suppose that this is our this is our uh, n type MOS, this is n plus doped, n plus doped, and this is p type substrate. As a result, there is a uh, there is a p-n junction created here. This p-n junction created here, we have majority of electrons. Here we have majority of holes. As a result, we see there is a charge accumulation created here and there is a charge accumulation created here as well. This charge accumulation creates capacitance. This type of capacitance, since they are related to the diffusion region, they are called the diffusion capacitance and diffusion capacitance also decreases uh, uh, decreases the overall perform, uh, performance ratings of the MOSFET. So, gate capacitance we have already measured that gate capacitance is equal to epsilon OX WL by TOX. Now, epsilon OX, is this, epsilon OX by TOX is equal to COX which is the oxide capacitance per unit area and oxide capacitance per micron is COX into L. We replace COX into L as C per micron that is oxide capacitance per micron. Typically, in case of MOSFET, this oxide capacitance per micron is uh, about 2 femtofarad per micrometer. Micron means micrometer. Now, diffusion capacitance. Diffusion capacitance are created from source to body or drain to body, which are which is undesirable and is called parasitic capacitance because we do not actually consider this uh, this capacitance in our model, but we need to consider because this is there. But we, this is very undesirable. 
the capacitance depends on the area area and the pa parameter because obviously the greater the source uh, the greater the diffusion region the greater will be area between the source and uh, diffusion region and the body and as we know c is equal to epsilon a by d if the area increases the capacitance increases and perimeter peri it depends on perimeter because d as the thickness increases uh, the capacitance will also increase so for that purpose in order to uh, minimize the diffusion capacitance what we need to do is you have to use small diffusion nodes and uh, small diffusion nodes we have to make the diffusion capacitance comparable to cg not very uh, not very much higher than cg and again for uncontacted regions for uh, the regions that do not contain contact we have to consider uh, we have to uh, design in such a way that the diffusion capacitance are almost half of cg and the diffusion capacitance actually varies with process for example with 6 nanometer uh, 6 nanometer process a diffusion uh, cap uh, ca uh, 6 micrometer process the diffusion capacitance uh, uh, will be uh, uh, a certain value and for uh, for maybe 7 or 12 mic micrometer process the diffusion capacitance will change so diffusion capacitance uh, as the process size increases the diffusion capacitance will also increase and this is undesirable and designs must be uh, while designing we have to always keep in mind whether we are decreasing the diffusion capacitance because we do not want these non-ideal effects to uh, affect our circuit and deteriorate the performance of our circuit that's all for uh, theory of mosfets uh, if you have any query feel free to uh, feel free to leave the queries in the discussion box and i'll try to answer them thank you